Your Excellency, Commander British Forces, South Atlantic Islands, Executive Officer of HMS Forth, members of the Legislative Assembly, government officials, the ship's company of HMS Forth, other members of the armed services, both serving and retired, as well as members of our own congregation, back in the cathedral for the first time since lockdown. It really is a genuine pleasure to be able to welcome you all here today. But whether you are part of this cathedral congregation or listening on Fulton's radio, we are delighted that you're able to share in our service of welcome for HMS Forth as she takes up her station patrolling the seas round the Falklands, South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands. The Royal Navy has had a long and a proud association with this cathedral. Men from HMS Cleopatra, a Comus class corvette under the cap command of Captain Lang, were instrumental in preparing the building for its consecration. And we have a record that nearly 100 officers and men attended that service in 1892. Since then, there has been the turmoil of the First World War with cruisers coming and going, remembering in particular the loss of HMS Monmouth and Good Hope under Admiral Craddock, whose memorial is on the wall here. From the Second World War, the battle ensign of HMS Achilles still hangs proudly over our nave. And of course, the Navy was extremely active in the more recent conflict of 1982. Now, all of this we remember today as we welcome HMS Forth to these waters and this morning, of course, to our cathedral. Industry, education, and the law. 
Let us bless the Lord. Christ, Christ Church Cathedral has seen many occasions of joy, sorrow and remembrance over the years. We come into the presence of Almighty God today to offer our worship, praise and thanksgiving. In particular, we thank God for the work of the Royal Navy in these islands over more than two and a half centuries. From the establishment of a naval base in Port Egmont, through the 19th century, the First and Second World Wars, and the Falklands conflict, to its important role today. As the senior service, the Royal Navy has a long and distinguished history of defending these islands, which is reflected in the memorials and ensigns in this cathedral church. This service recognises the Navy's contribution to our national life and marks the beginning of a new era as Her Majesty's ship Falk takes up a station patrolling the seas around the Falkland Islands, South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands, sometimes for weeks at a time in bad weather. We thank God for her continuous presence, for encouraging the fishing industry, for promoting goodwill and maintaining peace and security between the nations. So let us offer our prayers and thanksgiving to Almighty God our life and our salvation. Then everything will be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power and the, of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew the right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we stand to sing our first hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save.
He guides me across the dark waters. He steers me through deep channels. He keeps my lot. Yea, though I sail mid the thunders and tempest of life, I shall fear no danger, for he is with me. His love and his care they shelter me. He prepares a quiet harbour before me. He anoints the waves with oil. My ship rides calmly. Surely sunlight and starlight shall guide me on the voyage I take, and I will rest in the port of heaven there. The second reading is taken from the 27th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at verse 27. On the 14th night, we were still being driven across the Adriatic Sea, when about midnight the sailors sensed they were approaching land. They took soundings and found that the water was 120 feet deep. A short time later, they took soundings again and found it was 90 feet deep. Fearing that we would be dashed against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. In an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down into the sea, pretending that they were going to lower some anchors from the bow. Then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes that, led, that held the lifeboat and let it drift away. Just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. After he said this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all. Then he broke it and began to eat. They were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. Altogether, there were 276 of us on board. When they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship by throwing the grain into the sea. When daylight came, they did not recognize the land, but they saw a bay with a sandy beach, where they decided to run the ship aground if they could. Cutting loose the anchors, they left them in the sea, and at the same time untied the ropes that held the rudders. Then they hoisted the force out to the wind and made for the beach. But the ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. The bow stuck fast and would not move, and the stern was broken to pieces by the pounding of the surf. The soldiers planned to kill the prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming away and escaping, but the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to get there on planks or on other pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached land safely. This is the word of the Lord.
third reading is taken from the 8th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, beginning at verse 23. Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, You little thing, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Gain it, aspire. 
Though the sight line may end on the target, there cometh perchance the misfire. Canst follow the track of the dolphin, or tell where the sea swallows roam, where the Leviathan taketh his pastime, what ocean he calleth his own. So it is with the words of the rulers, and the orders these words shall convey. Every law is naught beside this one. Thou shalt not criticise, but obey. Say the wise, how may I know their purpose? Then acts without wherefore or why. Stays the fool but one moment to question, and the chance of his life passes by. Do they growl? It is well. Be thou silent. If the work goeth forward in aim, lo, the gun throws the shot to a hair's breadth, and shouteth, yet none shall complain. Do they growl and the work be retarded? It is ill. Be whatever their rank, the half-loaded gun also shouteth, but can she pierce target with blank? Doth the paintwork make war with the funnels, and the deck to the cannons complain? Nay, they know that some soap and some fresh water unites them as brothers again. So ye being heads of departments, do you growl with a smile on your lip? Lest ye strive and in anger be parted, and lessen the might of your ship. Just think in a moment of anger, tis well with thy seniors to fight. They prosper who burn in the morning the letters they wrote overnight. For many are shelved and forgotten with nothing to thank for their fate, but that on a half sheet of fool's cap, the fool hath the honour to state. Should the fairway be crowded with shipping beating home of the harbour to win, it is beat that lest any should suffer, the steamers pass cautiously in. So thou, when thou nearest promotion, and the peak that is gilded is nigh, give heed to words and thine actions, lest others be wearied thereby. It is ill for the winners to worry. Take thy fate as it comes with a smile, and when thou art safe in the harbour, they may envy, but will not revile. Uncharted the rocks that surround thee, take heed that the channels thou learn, lest thy name serve to boy for another, that shall the court martial return. And here is the moral of the poem. As the wave washes clear at the horse pipe, washes aft and is lost in the wake. So shalt thou drop astern, all unheeded, such time as these laws ye forsake. Now, whether or not you have any naval or maritime connections, there is a lot there to think about. Jesus said, looking after your neighbour is one of the most important things you can do in life. Because we work best together as a team. Let's think about that and act on it. Amen. We now stand to sing the hymn, O God, our God in ages past.
thanksgiving to Almighty God, our life and our salvation. God of the ages, you are the beginning of our journey and our strength as we pause along the way. Hold us by the hand as we grow. Show us where to seek you and guide our steps that we may find you. Give us devoted hearts that we may love you and your peace when we reach our journey's end. Amen. Eternal Lord God, creator of the earth and sky and sea, be pleased to receive under your protection all who go down to the sea in ships and occupy their business in great waters. Preserve them in body and soul. Prosper their labours with good success. In all time of danger, be their defence and bring them to the haven where they would be through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who has made us to live in company with one another, grant us the guidance of your Holy Spirit, that together we may learn kindness, self-control, loyalty and courage. Help us to overcome our faults and grow in all that is good and true, so that we spend our lives in the service of others and follow all our days in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O eternal Lord God, who alone spreadest out the heavens and rulest the raging of the sea, who has compassed the waters with bounds until day and night come to an end, be pleased to receive into thy almighty and most gracious protection the persons of us, thy servants, and the fleet in which we serve. Preserve us from the dangers of the sea and of the air and from the violence of the enemy, that we may be a safeguard unto our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and her dominions, and a security for such as pass on the seas upon their lawful occasions that the inhabitants of our islands and commonwealth may in peace and quietness serve thee, our God, and that we may return in safety to enjoy the blessings of the land with the fruits of our labours and with thankful remembrance to thy mercies to praise and glorify thy holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, when thou givest to thy servants to endeavour any great matter, grant us also to know that it is not the beginning, but the continuing of the same until it be thoroughly finished, that yieldeth the true glory. Through him who for the finishing of thy work laid down his life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty Father, look, we pray you upon HMS Forth, and grant that all who serve in her may be firm and loyal followers of Christ our Master. Take from us all selfishness and jealousy that may prevent unity and fellowship. May we seek neither to provoke irritation in others, nor be easily provoked ourselves and keep the door of our lips, that we may not repeat idle gossip that may harm others. For Christ's sake, Amen. Amen. And longing for the day when no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, let us pray as Christ our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for 
forever and ever. Amen. Please will you stand. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth and all mankind, peace and concord, and to our sinners life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. See you.